Hey, hey, Taurus. Intuitive Soul Coach here with your November 2024 bonus reading. Welcome back to my channel if you're returning and welcome if you're new. If you're interested in a personal reading, signing up for the monthly newsletter, or entering into the free reading giveaway, you can find all of that information in the description box below the video. All right, Taurus, welcome to your bonus reading where we look at the 1111 energy portal and take a look at how you can use this time to put your intentions out into the universe and what you can do to fully embody this cosmic energy, what you need to know, how can you best align, as well as how will this new wave cause a ripple effect over the coming months and well into your 2025. So I am seeing card 14 here, which is the drifter. So some of you, you've really been focusing on trying to stay more present, trying to, trying to become more aware of what's going on within you. Okay, that's a big thing here. What's going on within you? The spiritual downloads that you're getting, your emotions, your feelings. Also, you're very aware of what's going on externally as well. But I see with the drifter, some of you could be jumping ship, meaning you could be exiting maybe a career and entering into a new one. For some of you, it feels like you've just been coasting at times. And I feel like 2025 is really going to be a year of scaled work. You have the Eight of Pentacles here. And the Eight of Pentacles is putting in the work here to transform your life into the type of life that you've dreamt of or the type of life that really feels emotionally and physically satisfying. Because I see with the three of wands here, foundation. You're setting yourself up for an even stronger foundation. But it's because you are trusting in you. I'm getting a lot of that energy of you staying present in the midst of change. And embracing change better than maybe you have in the past. And I do feel like there is change coming in for the better. Bottom of the deck, we have repairing the veil. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Repairing the veil can be about forgiveness. It can even be about forgiving ourselves for which we did not know, right? I always say when you know better, you can do better. But sometimes we stay in situations because we feel like we don't have the resources or we don't have the skills or we haven't learned a lesson. But I feel like you have here. You've gone through a tower, I see, and the star is what's showing up for you. This is how you're receiving downloads. This is how you're receiving your intuitive information. A lot of you are looking to the stars, and I think Aries also received the star in this position. You may be looking to the stars, such as astrology, you listening to this Taurus video, you may be looking into human design or other ways for you to feel connected because the 1111 portal is all about connection and spiritual awakening and synchronicities so you're going deep within your own self your own spiritual self and i feel like that has really helped you get out of some rough times bottom of the deck two of swords there's been opposition here there's been times where you haven't perhaps trusted your intuition or perhaps you haven't been sure which choice to make. How, how can you move forward, right? And therefore, if you didn't have the information or the knowledge or the skills, it almost feels like it, it stopped you from making some sort of choice. But I do see here, this is you trusting, trusting your, your logic it is also about you trusting your instincts here. And I feel like if you've been paralyzed by indecision, if you have been staying where you're at due to fear, due to feeling bonded, there's compassion coming in here, Taurus. 
there is love. I feel like there is release and certainly change because at the bottom of the deck, we have repairing the veil with the butterfly next to it. And right under that, we have gathering around the power of community. And this could be your spiritual community. This could be your guides, your ancestors, knowing that you're not alone. And for some of you, you felt very much alone. You felt like you were a drifter here. And you feel like you may have been just drifting through life. But I feel like there is an intention that you are putting out into the universe. And we'll take a look here in just a moment. But I do see you experiencing life as it comes in this newer age of Aquarius because there's going to be a lot of changes and some of the old beliefs are no longer aligned with this new age of Aquarius and you could be changing your mindset, changing your perspective, changing how you view relationships, changing how you view your location or your, you know, whatever it may be for you. I just see change coming in all around and also some sort of dream that you have had with the star. I feel like you may have put it on the back burner or perhaps out of sight, out of mind. You haven't thought about this dream for a while or perhaps you said, well, if it's meant to be, it will, but you haven't taken action towards it. I see that there is going to be opportunity for you right now, setting this intention, taking action to go all the way. I do see that. And I haven't even looked at your cards besides the star yet. So starting off, what can you do to step into this 1111 cosmic energy? Knight of Cups. Knights are all about movement. And this is allowing your heart to flow freely, right? Reciprocity. You can see that he's holding up his cup and there's actually a beautiful otter. Otters are one of my favorite animals. And you see the otter that is in the water next to him. Otters are very playful and you are being guided to have fun at this time, not take life so darn seriously, especially when there's craziness and chaos and division and everything externally that can be thrown at us. You're being Ask to keep your heart open and stay filled with this compassion and stay open to, to love. Asking yourself, what would love do? Because the Knight of Cups is, is someone who has some deep feelings and they're just trying to navigate their way through the emotion, emotional depth. And sometimes they only want to go to their knees, right? Because it, it may feel a little bit scary to, to go in over your head. But I feel like Spirit is saying, don't be afraid to continue taking the steps. You know, you won't get in over your head because you've learned how to swim, right? And the Knight of Cups is saying, stay open to the opportunities, to the possibilities, to your heart. And I also feel for some of you, there's been a bit of opposition here with the heart and maybe you've shut down or maybe you've even had some complications around the chest area or around the lungs, uh, the, the heart. This can also be depression. It can be loneliness. It can be anxiety. It can be forgiveness. And I feel like you're working on healing because I see a couple of cards now around healing. The four of swords, the star, and this repair work. So if you have struggled, some of you may have even had some sort of open heart surgery or there may have been a surgery though, but you've had to watch your blood pressure or you've had to watch your heart rate because this almost is giving me surgery vibes with the repairing the veil. Yeah, but I feel like moving into 2025, you're healing quite nicely here. What do you need to be fully awake for? What is it that you need to be fully awake for? You have the eight of pentacles. Not being afraid to put in the work and master your skills. You're very, very good at what you do. And I feel like what, you, what you're good at is where you feel successful at. But I'm also getting another message here. The message is don't be afraid to step outside of the comfort zone and try something that you're not so good at. 
And you may be saying, well, Mel, why would I focus on that when I already know what I'm good at? I'm going to stick to it. Because focusing sometimes on something that we're not good at, for one, it can humble us. For two, it can expand our consciousness. And for three, this is something that you could start to build momentum up and it could help you in more than one area of your life. So if there is something you're good at, of course, continue to, to master your craft. But I feel for some of you, take this pentacle. And this is so interesting because this is coming through actually before I looked at the card. Take this eighth pentacle that doesn't necessarily have a, an illustration on it. You can see that the seven pentacles, they have that shape, but the eighth one doesn't quite have shape yet. So even if something hasn't quite manifested or you have just opened up the level of curiosity, it almost feels like there's something you are meant to learn, some sort of knowledge that, it, that is meant to be gained. Be experimental in this process because I feel like you're very, very close to material success, financial success, and changes. And this skill is only going to enhance you. So that's a message here coming in. What do you need to be fully awake for? Staying curious to, you know, your skills and your craft, but not being afraid to learn something new that may even take you outside of your comfort zone. Now, what is your intention that you're putting out into the universe? The three of wands, I'm loving this. The three of wands is the card of manifestation. It's the card of anticipation as well. Planning, courage, exploration. Success is but a move away. And for some of you, there has been a bit of hesitation or perhaps you found your mind drifting or you found your ideas kind of drifting. And I feel like you may be grabbing onto one of those ideas, one of those creations, one of those seeds. And the Eight of Pentacles tells me you're planting that seed. And I feel like it's important to continue watering it. It's important to allow this to grow. And you can still plant other seeds. You can still do other things. But be sure you're going back and nurturing something over here. You could be finishing up a class. You could be gaining additional certification here or there may be like a real estate license or a nursing license something that needs to be re-upped or renewed but i'm loving the three of wands because you are putting out into the universe that you're ready no more hesitating you're not going to get lost in the planning because this is something that you want and i do see as well with this four of swords how can you best align with the intentions is don't obsess about it. Don't overwork to the point where it becomes a chore because then we lose sight of our true intention in the first place. And for those of you that a situation has become a chore or, you know, at work you used to love what you do, but now it's become overwhelming because there's been so many tasks thrown at you or it just doesn't feel as exciting. That's where you put that thinking cap on with the eight of pentacles and say, okay, what do I need to do here to build my skill, to branch off, to maybe cut away some of those branches that are no longer helpful or beneficial? Or how can I plant some new seeds here that have the potential to grow into this eight of pentacles and be very, very helpful when it comes to your recovery, recovery of finances, recovery of, you know, the physicalities, the material world. But try not to obsess about it. This also has to do with the body, with health, rest. You know, there was, there was an old belief, and I don't know if this is the old, older generation, that I'm just going to push my way through it, work my way through it. That's a big thing that even my own mother says at times is, I'm just going to work it out of me. You may have heard that. Work it out of the system. And Taurus, that can be something that you may have even believed at times, or maybe it is a belief that you have. I'm just going to work it out of my system. But sometimes we need the rest. Sometimes our body is saying to us, slow down for a reason. 
right? This morning I woke up with some weird gunk in my throat, but you know, I, I meditated, I journaled for a while, I took it extra easy and really connected to my higher self and said, do I need to rest a little bit more? What do I need to do in order to not push myself so much? And what am I not listening to at this time and I feel like that's something you are being more aware of is being present of what your body is trying to tell you being present of some of the beliefs that may not help you right pushing through something when you are exhausted or you know overthinking to the point where it's causing headaches or it's causing you to waste time right time management and the four of swords is saying rest retreat heal go within self-care this is the card of renewal it is the card of being able to take breaks we have this big belief around hustle mentality we have to hustle 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 work 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 and not that we shouldn't do those things from time to time but when we are going a hundred miles per hour like the energizer bunny there's going to be a consequence and I feel for some of you, you are aware of what those consequences are because you've lived them. And so there's the reminder here of how you can best align with the intentions that you're putting out there with some of these moves. So for example, some of you could be moving. You could be planning a move in the upcoming year. Try not to do everything yourself right? Maybe if you're able to hire some movers or ask some friends to help you move because sometimes it can be overwhelming and you don't want to, you don't want to pull a muscle or do something that's going to kind of put you out the very opposite of what you were trying to put out into the, the universe. So what are you doing? How are you receiving downloads? How are they coming through at this time? Well, we do have the Eight of Swords here showing up. So the first message is try not to let the monkey mind bond you. Try not to get into the energy of replaying out an old story over and over because when we are replaying out that old story, we tend to sometimes block the new downloads from coming through. Free yourself. Work on ways to be mindful. That's a big message here because by being mindful, you are going to receive some downloads, getting out in nature, going for a walk, focusing on being present. And that's a huge message here for you, Taurus, focusing on being present because I do feel like you're jumping ship. And it's interesting because a lot of times we'll see the, the ship on the three of wands and that is your intention here so you want to move forward i see that but at times you get stuck in the limited thinking you get bonded to the the brain that tries to protect us at times and tell us that's not a good idea to do don't do that you're gonna you know you're gonna regret it don't move forward, you're going to fail, right? Or don't do that. You know what happened last time. So try to work with your brain to rebuild, not destroy. And I see that if you can work more on staying present, staying more mindful, not letting the eight of swords take over, because this can be mind blocks. And you may even at times question your own potential. And Spirit is saying, oh no, work on affirmations. Work on replenishing those thoughts that tell you you are more than enough. Focus on replenishing those thoughts that tell you you have what it takes to move forward. That you can keep your heart open. You start off with the Knight of Cups. This is the card of movement, Taurus. So I feel like you are moving towards a really beautiful time where you don't have to live in that hustle, 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 or feel bonded, tethered, or stuck to a certain energy here. You want to experience life as it comes, but you also want to be financially or materially supported. And that's not selfish. That's not selfish. Some of you, card 14, this is the temperance, Sagittarian energy. You've waited a long time. And you've seen 
perhaps tempers come out within yourself or with others. You've seen things that have been out of control. Maybe you have felt at times overprotective or maybe not protective enough of a dream or of some sort of integrity. But I feel what you're doing now is you're really coming into this, this energy of tender love and care and nurturing yourself and you're, you're moderating here. There's balance, balance between body, mind, and soul. And I see you really putting that into practice in 2025. Now, what is the outcome? How will this new wave cause a ripple over the coming months and well into your 2025? You have the star. The star is the the only major arcana that has come out in your reading, but it's the major arcana that promises a bright future. It is all about healing. It's about your dreams. It's Aquarian energy about wishes being granted. So Aquarian season, January and February, which is the start of 2025, things are really looking up for you. Could be health wise, okay? Because we do see you putting some of your, your skills to action and not feeling, instead of feeling like you are stuck, instead of feeling like you don't have a choice or an option, I see you overcoming this with the Eight of Swords because you have the skill to do so. Double Eights, Eight of Pentacles says that you have what it takes to put in the work to untether yourself, whether it be through your thoughts, whether it be physically, whether it be emotionally, right? You are moving forward and I see a bright future ahead for you. Let's get a couple of extra cards just to tune into 2025. Spirit, what does the star look like here for Taurus's 2025? What is the good? What's the brighter part of next year? Ace of Swords, the Nine of Coins. Okay, we're going to take both of these. Ace of Swords is a newfound sense of clarity of who you are, where you're going, who you need to become, the thoughts that you need to tell yourself, right? And I feel like this is, I'm getting a very interesting verbiage. I'm getting, it's a very delicious time. Maybe some of you are cooks or bakers, okay? This could be a very delicious time for you to expand your horizons. Ace of Swords, more of that air energy, Aquarian energy. So this is big thinking, big ideas. If you want to open a food truck, if you want to sell your cupcakes, right? If you want to open up a restaurant, I know I'm talking about food, but this can be anything here. If you want to put yourself out there, look at what you're doing here. You have the eight of pentacles. There's the skill in 2025, you're moving to the nine of pentacles, which is one of my favorite minor arcanas because it is about prosperous victory. It is about creating a life that you love, Taurus, a life that you are proud of. It's self-sufficiency and independence. It's hard work paying off and it's material wealth as well. So a lot of you, you may have gone through a tower moment financially or again with your health or just, it could be anything. But I see the comeback here is stronger than any setback. The comeback is stronger than the bondage. You're not going to let the mind overrule and dictate you in a, a negative or limiting way that maybe it has in the past. Or perhaps you've let other people, other people's words hold you back. And you're breaking out of that. Ace of Swords, if you didn't have clarity in 2024 or things felt very hectic, very chaotic, very confusing, the energy of the 1111 portal which does represent, again, new beginnings, ones some of you may be seeing 1111 more often. It's something that I've seen for years and years on end. But now I'm really seeing one, two, three, fours like crazy every single day. So pay attention to the synchronicities. Pay attention to numbers, to dreams, to not just external synchronicities, which are coming in hot for you, Taurus, but pay attention to the downloads that you are receiving through your mindful practices, through yoga, through meditating, even while you're in the shower, because a lot of you, you have this curiosity, this thirst for, for life, for growth, for expansion. 
And I feel like this is the time for you to fill yourself up. This is the time to hydrate, quench that thirst. This is really beautiful. All right, we're gonna take a look here at the Drifter card 14. What lights you up? Experiencing life as it comes, seeking the essence, but not always knowing the form. The Drifter invites you to step out of your to-do list and your ordinary routine, to feel the breeze against your skin, calling you to follow the wind and explore life's opportunities. When the drifter appears, it's a sign that it's time to cut the mooring lines holding you to the dock. It's not important to know the destination before you set sail. It will become clear as you leave port. Do not wait for a map as there are none to where you are destined to go. But be sure that you do have a compass to keep, your, to keep you true. Yours is your pure love and your intention to be free even of your own beliefs and preconceptions. Few appreciate the energy of the drifter. Here, you might not seem to be doing anything worthwhile or meeting someone else's expectations, but you are the only one who understands that others are running full out on the hamster wheel and getting nowhere. Your laziness is an underappreciated virtue. You know that life will find you and bring you everything you require without your having to search for it by simply being instead of frantic doing. Even as you let your mind wander, releasing it to go on a daily walkabout, call it back home regularly to deliver news from the cosmos. The drifter helps you find what you are looking for even when you didn't think you were seeking anything. That's beautiful. First of all, we talk about the Energizer Bunny. They talk about the hamster wheel. So that is a beautiful thing here of allowing yourself to daydream. We're stuck in that hustle mentality sometimes, especially as earth signs, right? I have a few Capricorn placements in my chart and Taurus, uh, you are my north node. And it can be difficult at times, although I've learned to to really work on this part, it can be difficult to slow things down, but I found a very good balance as I'm a Libra sun, and I feel like you are really wanting to experience that sense of freedom. And it's interesting here to note for you at the beginning of your reading, I'm, I don't think I mentioned this, but I did see an eagle, and eagles to me represent freedom and liberation. So you may be seeing an eagle, that could be a sign or a synchronicity regarding freedom. And that could be about staying open, staying curious. That is what I have for you, Taurus. Embrace the energy of the 1111, okay? And see how this shifts into a very powerful cosmic alignment with the star as you move into your 2025. Thank you again for being here today, Taurus. If this was helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. Feel free to share, like, subscribe, and hit that bell. And thank you again. Lots of love.